hi everybody this is julissa thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel and thank you so much for listening in the podcast it is wednesday march 27 2024 and like i said thank you so much for being here i'm here to speak about another mega church you guys know this is um holy week and a lot of people were getting ready for easter coming up this sunday resurrection sunday and there's a lot of churches, a lot of big productions happening in America as we speak. A lot of people are rehearsing right now. And here's the thing, though. I'm going to speak about another mega church who used a very popular song by a secular singer to kind of like prepare or they did a presentation for Palm Sunday that just happened. Right. So here's the thing, guys. This is how in trouble the American church is right now that you have to, there's so many talented Christian artists, Christian musicians right now, creating beautiful songs for the Lord to glorify the Lord. And you as a Christian church in America, instead of coming out, right? And standing out and be the change in the world and being different, come on, coming out from among them and setting the standard and being different, right? You have to recruit to a very popular song by this singer who we know is not about Jesus, who we know his whole career is not about glorifying God. Okay, let me just tell you something. I do understand that for us as people kind of like, as the public, it's very hard for us to find out and pinpoint who actually sold, sold their soul, their soul, excuse me, for fame and fortune. Who make the deal with the enemy to have fame and fortune? We understand that. It's very hard. If you, I mean, if you think about it, not a lot of those people make it public, right? You kind of see different things. And if you're a Christian, you're looking out for fruit and you look at what they deal with and who they associate themselves with. And you're like, hmm, something's a little fishy here, AKA Lacrae saying that he attended PDD parties before. And it's so crazy, everything that's going on with PDD and Diddy, whatever his name is. And then you see somebody like Lacrae saying, oh yeah, I actually attended some of the parties. Like it makes you wonder, why is he even invited to that at all, right? I think when you get invited for a party like that, like you must be in association as it is already, something in the air, you must be in the surrounding areas to even get invited, right? It's like you're getting ready for a wedding. You don't invite everybody for a wedding. Right? It's kind of like, who gets an invitation? Like friends, families, and then some people that know somebody that you knew probably for a long time. For him to even get invited, that says a lot about the person. Okay? So here's the thing, though. I, like I said, I understand it's very hard for us to be like, did that person sold their soul? Did that person? And then you have communication like this with other Christian people, and they get so fixated in saying, oh, nobody can sell their soul. It's not theirs to begin with. It's like, hold on one second. That's not the point. You know, it's like you tell them, hey, the house is on fire, and then trying to figure out what match are they using. It's like we have a big eminent problem, okay, that we need to like look up for. Get away from like, did you re really say the right thing? Did you really say somebody sold their soul? Because that's not even biblical. That's not even this. That's not even that. Well, let's just say maybe not really sold their soul. Maybe they just make deals to create fame and fortune. Okay. Because that's the thing. It's even hard to have these conversations about people with people who know the Lord, who people with people who go to church, they get so fixated in you saying the right things instead of looking at the big problem that we have in our hands. The American church is, is in big trouble, okay? Why is it, like I said, there's so many Christian singers right now. This is the moment where people who normally don't really go to church on a regular basis, they're like, hey, um, it's Easter, it's Restoration Sunday, let's go see what this is all about. And they're going to walk into a church and hear a song. Let me tell you, they hear, they hear a, a performance, right? Because everything is performing arts now. Everybody wants to create content. Everybody wants to be um, relevant, okay? And it's like, what is most relevant than the word of God? 
in this life, in this planet, what is the most relevant, what can be more relevant than the word of God? Okay. Um, so they heard a song by, I think his name is The Weeknd by this singer, right? So this church in Florida, um, mega church, I'm going to tell you, mega church performs the weekend blinding lights for Palm Sunday, a whole ordeal that was rehearsed in the altar of the Lord, in the altar where people come and they pray for them, where people come and they, and they accept Jesus Christ for Palm Sunday, where a lot of people probably attended the church for the first time, this church goers, members of this church, pastors, people in leadership in this church found it okay for them to play and rehearse, okay? Because we know that when a church go, they have plays and things like that, they rehearse a lot. So it's an ongoing repetition, okay? It's ongoing excitement and dancing of the same music in the altar that people accept Jesus Christ in, okay? So they they play the song, The um, Blinding Lights, by this artist called The Weeknd. As you can tell, I'm not that familiar with him, but this man has, it's not like he's like, oh yeah, he's Phil Wickman, we know he's trying to glorify God. It's not even a Phil Wickman, Mercy Me. It's not even like a Matthew West song. They have to, I don't see the need to go outside of Christians to do a performance for Palm Sunday. Why not pick a song from one of these people, like a Jeremy, Jeremy Camp, right? Who, people who dedicate their entire career to glorify the Lord with their music. Do you really think you have to go outside of that to do this performance, to be re um, relevant to the audience? It's just crazy to me. And this is another church putting it out there, putting it out there. They don't care. It's like a big disco party. And, you know, then you like search into this, right? And you look and see what church is this? And then you see that the church is called, let me tell you, the church is called Church by the Glades and it's located in Coral Spring, Florida. And it's led by Pastor David Hughes, okay? And what I was saying in the beginning about Lacrae saying how he attended some of the uh, Diddy parties and things like that. And then you wonder why is he even attending to this? So how did he even get invited? He must be in the same surface in the same neighborhood right so when i searching for this church called church by the glaze in coral great uh, gables uh, coral springs excuse me florida who just this weekend like i said just this weekend they used the song um blinding lights by the weekend i gotta make sure i'm saying it the right thing and i'm like okay so it's led by pastor david hughes and then you search about them and what did you find? Stephen Furtick, they're best friends with Stephen Furtick. And you're like, okay, it makes a lot of sense. They're all in the same neighborhoods. All these churches, they're all in the same neighborhood. It doesn't have to be location-wise, meaning they're after the same agenda. It's almost like, wow, who's sending the memo? Do they get a memo? Are, are all these churches all connected and they get a memo and say, this is what you got to do. You have to use this song. You have to make it more worldly. And then the church, the other church is like, okay, we'll do it. We're following the same thing because that's what the leader said. And who is the leader? Do you really think it's Jesus Christ the leader? Right? And then when you say things like this, people get so fixated and you're like, oh, nobody can sell their soul. That's not even the point. The biggest point is that we have a problem here. There is no need to make these dance performances using worldly songs. When you have so many Christian artists out there with so much talent creating beautiful songs for Jesus Christ, there is no need to resort to that. Okay? And what? 
I'm, I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but what tomorrow, like then they're gonna say, oh, the weekend, that's his name. He's associated with P. Diddy, and now he's into the the whole investigation of sex trafficking. And people, oh yeah, they play that song. My church has no problem with that because they use his song for our uh, Palm Sunday performance. That is the problem that we're having right now. And like I said, I searched this pastor, David Hughes, and his wife, and they're like, oh yeah, we've been friends with um, with Stephen Furtick and, and the wife for many, many years. It makes sense, you know, like, they said to Peter, you are, you, we know that you are with Jesus. We, we know you're part of that group because you speak like them. That's what I'm saying. Like, what makes you think, why is Lacrette being invited to Diddy's um, party? Because he's in the same neighborhood. He's part of the same friendship, the friend group. Why is this church out of nowhere is using this out of nowhere? No, because I think in the past they had gotten... Um, controversies using worldly songs too, but you know, you just have to dig a little bit. Oh, let me check their Instagram and see what they're all about. Oh, there you are. They're best friend with Stephen Furtick. Of course, they're going to use songs like this. Of course, they're going to put out big performances because they are friends with the same people that, you know, they're saying they want to avoid words like Calvary, crucifixion, and the, and the blood of Jesus Christ for the Easter service. Of course they're gonna do that, okay? You don't need to like, you know, who you hang out with says a lot about you. And we heard this years after years and so many, you know, so many times. And now when you look at all these mega churches in America, you're like, wait a second, they're all like together? Is this, is this some type of big ring that they're all connected to? Because apparently, they're all talking about the same thing. Do they have like a secret calendar that they all have to follow aside from the big holidays like, you know, Christmas and Easter? Because to be honest, you know, when you look at church online and you see some of the sermon, it's like you're watching one church at 11 a.m. and they're talking about this. And then you turn to the other church and they're like talking about the same thing. That is kind of like strange to me. I'm not saying it in a big holiday. I know for this Sunday, of course, coming up there, hopefully, I think as I'm expecting a lot of these churches to speak about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I'm saying like on an off Sunday that nothing like a specific is being celebrated. It's kind of like, wait a second, that church is talking about the, other, the same thing. That's a little odd. And then you see another month and they're like, it's matching up. Some of these churches are talking about the same thing. It's almost like they're following this big calendar calendar that only the people in leadership know about. They're singing the same songs. That kind of like, wait a second, that's a little odd. And you have to pay attention, okay? You have to pay attention. It's not too hard to figure it out. They said to Peter, we know that you are with Jesus because you t- you speak like the, like him. Okay? People know. Even like when you see like when you see somebody changing their vocabulary and you're like, wait a second, you're you're speaking differently. And then like I say, it doesn't take that long and you're like, okay, let me shape what they're why are they different suddenly? And then you look at their Instagram like, oh they're they best friend with so and so. Of course, it shows. That's one of the biggest revealed things that you can notice about somebody changing because who they hang out with. So it's crazy to me, guys. There is no need. Okay. I think in my opinion, there is no need to be like, oh, let's use a Beyonce song to to perform on Easter. When you have so much talent out there in the Christian community this excuse about being relatable and like being relevant. It's just, it's just so weird, right? So it's just, it's weird. It's not weird. The weird part of it is like the need to be like, you know, let's grab people to come in using this very popular radio song right now. You know, if you do that in the first invitation, 
other changes are going to have to happen for you to keep that type of audience, for you to keep that money flow. Other things you're going to be compromising, other things you're going to be eliminating, like the word of the, you know, the word crucifixion, the, the word, the, um, the blood of Christ from your sermons because you don't want to offend anybody. At the end of the day, doing that and keeping a big audience means nothing. And the Bible says, do not take away from anything from this book or add anything. That's very clear, guys. We are in big trouble right now. The, the church in America is in big trouble. So um, let me know what you guys think about this. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. And thank you for listening in the podcast. Have a good day, everybody. God bless.